All right, all right, all right. I hope everyone is having a good day. Now, uh, before I give you this build breakdown and everything, I wanted to give you a little bit of background. Now, just so you know, with the increase to exotic component drops in the Dark Zone, a lot of people are starting to farm the Dark Zone boxes because they do give you a chance of exotic components. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to show you the fastest way to hit all of the DZ chests, um, starting with Dark Zone West, which I'll do later today. It's going to be all 13 DZ chests within 8 minutes. So you can do all 13 and then jump to the next Dark Zone and do all of those. So I'm going to show you videos on all of that. Now in this video, I'm going to show you one of the builds that I am using to do these speed runs in the Dark Zone. That way you don't die, you can hit all your chest, ex um, you know, extract, get out of there, and uh, you know, do so with minimal PvP. But if you do happen to have to PvP, uh, this is going to be a build for you. You, you guys remember those armor regen god builds? Well, this one, you'll see. Anyways, let's get on to it. What's going on, YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Now, shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. And in today's build video, I'm going to show you my Dark Zone farming build. This is the build that I am using on this character to farm all of the Dark Zone chests. Get all, get all my exotic components and all of that jazz. I mean, to for all of you asking me why, I mean, look at this. My Kingbreaker is now level 19. I mean, this is getting really good. It's very lucrative doing these farms. I just maxed out my Eagle Bearer to 21 expertise, and now I'm about to do the same with my Kingbreaker. So if all that sounds good, sit back, relax, grab that popcorn. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. But just a reminder, tomorrow is the PTS for Title Update 17. And then also my last reminder before we get into this, um, for all of you members out there and for everyone that wants to become a member, just click that join button on my channel. You can become a paid member for the channel. And for all of those members, remember we will be doing members only videos, members only live streams, and within those live streams, we will be doing members only giveaways. So again, you can become a member, support the channel, and you will get a chance to get some of the giveaways. But without further ado, let's jump into my Dark Zone farming build for the Division 2. Now this is a armor regen build, so let's just go ahead and jump straight to that. My armor regen currently is at 88,000. 177. I have over 2.1 million armor. So like I've been saying time and time again with these farms, make sure you have a high armor, high armor region build, and then make sure you are using the decoy for your skill. That way you can hit the box, get out of there quick and fast, and everyone's looking at your decoy. Now, Starting off at the top with the specialization, we are using the Technician specialization. Reason being is it gives me a plus one skill tier for that decoy, but then it also gives me the linked laser pointer. Now we are using the King Breaker, and we are using the linked laser pointer on the King Breaker. Now remember the King Breaker comes with the talent Perfect Flatline, so it amplifies all the damage I do to Pulsed enemies. Now this one is maxed out everything with expertise level 19 and that gives me 93.4k for the total damage even with 2.1 million armor. Now that perfect flatline goes perfect with my <laughs> perfect spotter. Now perfect spotter amplifies your weapon damage and skill damage by 20% to pulsed enemies so we are getting 20% from that and 20% from the perfect flatline. Now as far as your secondary and sidearm, you can use whatever it is you want. And as far as your second skill, I would recommend using a jammer pulse, but you can really use just whatever it is you want. Now looking at this build, just a quick overview, we are using three pieces of golem gear. We have the closer chest piece with perfect spotter. We have one piece of bellstone armory, and then we have the Emperor's Guard knee pads. Now these are not the knee pads with double armor region. That's on my main character. This is uh, one of my mule characters. 
So this is like a secondary armor region build. Now uh, let's do a deep dive, starting with the mask, the Golan Gear mask. Now the Golan Gear brand set bonuses we get from this build, 10% status effects, that 1% armor region, but then also 5% total armor, which really does help us out here. Now, as far as the attributes, we have max armor for the core, max armor region, and then max crit hit damage. Now, we are using max crit chance mods all around because we want to get that king breaker as high up crit chance as possible because this is a tanky build, so we need to rely on headshots and high crit. Um, that is it for the mask. Our next piece of Golan gear is the backpack. Now this backpack, max armor for the core, max armor region with max crit chance. And then for that mod, again, max crit chance mod. Now we do have adrenaline rush on here just to make it even better. So you're tanky, you have armor region, and you have bonus armor with your decoy. So you're going to be able to farm these chests and all that with very minimal damage taken. Now, remember, armor region gives you that bonus armor whenever you're within 10 meters of an enemy, but it is different in the dark zone. So if we go over to normalized, you can see right here, it shows it is half that you get in PvE. So it's 20% in PvE, and it's 10% in PvP. Now, our last piece of Golan gear are the gloves. Now, these gloves max armor again for the core, max armor region with a max crit hit damage roll. Going to the chest piece, this is the closer. This is the named Yuzina Gedica chest piece with perfect spotter. Works wonders with perfect flatline. It's like these things were made for each other. Now, as far as the Yuzina Gedica brand set bonus for this build, 5% total armor to go with that other 5% from the Golan gear. And this is how you get up to that 2.1 million armor mark. Now, as far as the attributes, max armor for the core, max armor region, and max crit chance with a max crit chance mod. And then again, perfect spotter amplifies your weapon damage to pulsed enemies, just like the perfect flatline. Now, going to the holster, we have Bellstone Armory for the holster. Now, the Bellstone Armory brand set bonus we get from this build, 1% armor region. Now, as far as the attributes, we have max armor for the core, max armor region with a max crit hit damage mod. And then finally, we have the Emperor's Guard knee pads. Uh, now, these named Murakami knee pads come with the 1% armor region as an attribute. Now, it also has max armor for the core and then max crit hit damage. Now, for the Murakami Industries, we do get that skill duration, which does help out our decoy. And there you have it. This is my Dark Zone farming build, like a Dark Zone armor region god build. I mean, you can out-tank players, you can out-tank landmarks, you could do speed runs, you could do whatever you want in the Dark Zone with this build. Just put it on and have some fun. Now let's uh, finish up with the stats. Now this is going to be for the King Breaker. We're at 93.4k weapon damage, 37.3k for PvP. 50% crit chance on the dot with 93 crit hit damage and 75 headshot. Don't forget about the health damage and damage targets out of cover. <clears throat> Going to the offensive tab, we're sitting at 29% all weapons damage bonus and 30% AR damage bonus. So every time we're using the King Breaker, we're starting off at 59% damage bonus total. Going to the gear talents, we are using Adrenaline Rush for that increased survivability and Perfect Spotter to go with our King Breaker. Defensive tab, we're over 2.1 million armor, over 88k armor region, 339k health, with 10% explosive and hazard, and that is due to our watch level. So here's your disclaimer for all my build videos. I am at shade level 3,988. That means all these boxes are maxed out 50 of 50. That means uh, if you copy and paste my build and you are at or above shade level 1,000, you should get the exact same numbers and results. However, if you are below shade level 1,000, your character is not min-maxed. Therefore, when you go to copy and paste my build, some of your numbers might be lower than others. It's okay. Don't freak out. It's still a great build. Just put it together and have some fun. But know that your character will min-max at shade level 1,000. 
So that's a recommendation. It's not a requirement. But uh, yeah, have some fun. Now, with all that said and done, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick little uh, DZ farm. So uh, yeah, sit back, relax, you know, grab the popcorn. Make sure that you have already liked the video. If you haven't already, what are you waiting on? Hit that like. It's free. And here we go. So we're starting off at uh, Alpha Checkpoint. Now, in this gameplay, I'm going to hit every single box in the Dark Zone. And I'll do a video on this later, but uh, I refreshed my speedrun, and now it does every single box in DZ West. And I'm going to do videos on this for each of the Dark Zones, so that way you can farm all of the boxes in the entire game. Super fast and easy. All right, there's box number one, but it's been taken. Oh, no. Now, there are 13 boxes total, so it's okay if we miss a few of them. And everyone knows about all of these farms, so we'll, we'll see. The only advantage doing this in level 40 is you get to have a nice build, you get to have that decoy, all of that. But remember, if you do this in level 30, the uh, Dark Zone lobbies might be empty, and it could make it a little bit easier to farm, but... I like having the uh, better build and the decoy. That way I could just, you know, farm this, switch characters, farm it, keep going. We do have people in the lobby going rogue. I see you. Now here we are, box number three. Ah, empty again. And I hope everyone's doing good. Remember, the PTS starts tomorrow, so it's going to be exciting seeing what's new. It's kind of like a Division Christmas, if you know what I mean. We're going to have new weapons, new gear, new exotics, the whole nine. Not only that, but there's going to be some changes to the Dark Zone, so we might be able to get some raid exclusives. We'll see. We'll test it out tomorrow. Damn, all of these boxes. Okay. I see you, game. Oh, uh, there's people, there's people farming this dark zone, that might be why. And that's the only problem with level 40, is that you do have a lot of people going into the dark zones. Mm, there we go. And then get out of there, just like that, boom. And you can see with the armor region, very nice, good job. There are some rogues around, but we're not really worried about them. Just keep doing our thing. Now, that was uh, box number five, so we do have eight more boxes to hit. A Warhound Grenadier just killed a player. Dang. We've only hit uh, one box out of the first five, so hopefully... Oh, there we go. There's box number six. And then again, use the decoy. You can use the jammer. And then you're out. And you can see my armor. I mean, I'm still full armor. This is a perfect build to use for this uh, type of farming. Because you, you can literally do this without having a scratch on you. So that was box number six. So far, we were, we've been able to loot two of six. We'll see. It's going to be pretty rare to find all 13 boxes unlooted. We'll see, though. Nope. Number seven has been taken. Decoy. And we're out. Now number eight and number nine are going to be at the shopping center. So we're going to run our way over there. And then you can PvP with this build. You can PvE with this build. You can do whatever you want in the Dark Zone with this build. I'm just showing you how to farm all of these chests because everyone needs exotic components. And this is one of the best ways to increase your chances of getting an exotic. Hero is returning to base. It's not guaranteed. Not like the Anderson mission. However... 
you do have a good chance of getting them in the dark zone. In fact, I believe it's the best chance you have in the, in the entire game is uh, getting them here in the dark zone. All right, box number eight was looted. Let's go upstairs to box number nine. Nope, number nine has been taken as well. Oh, man. And then this, if this is the uh, the case and all the boxes have been looted, just change your instance, change your lobby, and you should be able to loot all the boxes in a different lobby. Use the decoy, and then boom. That was box number 10, so we have three more boxes. And then just to show you, you can go rogue and open up these boxes if you want. It's not gonna change anything for the uh, invaded dark zone. That's an old thing that they had back when this was the occupied dark zone, where it didn't want you to steal anything, just loot because you were already technically rogue. And then they kind of did away with that whenever they made this an invaded dark zone instead of occupied. But uh, that's still one of the little things in this game. Alright, here's box number 11. It's been taken. Alright. Box number 12 is the safe house. And then box number 13 is at the landmark. And then you go back to the alpha checkpoint. So we start at the alpha checkpoint and we leave the alpha checkpoint. And you can do all of this within 10 minutes, maybe, I don't know, 8 to 9 minutes if you do it fast enough. Now, if this is not invaded and you have to steal each of the boxes, it might add another minute or two to your time just because you have to sit there and hold down, you know, steal. All right, box number 12 is down here. Oh, someone's taking this one. Damn. All right, and then box number 13 is going to be way down south at the landmark, and then boom, that's all 13 Dark Zone chests. Now, it doesn't matter if they're a normal black chest or a yellow chest, you'll still be able to get exotic components. I've been able to get exotic components from both. It's just remember that it is a 25% chance. So each time you open up the box, you only have a 25% chance of getting an exotic component. But it is possible to get them from each of these chests. All right, as soon as you see this uh, broken overpass, start heading to your left. And then you're going to go down this alleyway and go straight head on to this landmark. And this is your last chest of this farming route. But again, you can PvE, you can PvP with this build. I mean, it's a 2.1 million armor build with a whole bunch of amplified damage and armor regen. I mean, come on. Come on. And box number 13 has been taken. All right. So let's, uh, let's check out our loot. We'll probably just extract the DZ resources and then get out of here. Because remember, we did get a few drops. Uh, Gunslinger. Adrenaline Rush on a Brazos build with Headshot. Uh, I could probably use that. All right, deconstruct your contaminated. See, it turns into DZ resources. And then you can extract those DZ resources. So not only is this a good farm for gear, it's also a good farm for DZ resources, and you have a chance to get uh, exotic components. Hostile defender drone detected. Now what I'll do is I'll probably reset the instance and then run this again just to show you. Uh, some more boxes opening up. We'll see though. Again, it's all chance and it's all per lobby. So if you're in a full lobby, chances are a lot of those boxes will be taken. You'd have to get into like a really fresh lobby for you to be able to hit all 13. But the chance is there. And now you know the route. And then you just extract here, go back to the alpha checkpoint, and then you're done. Congrats. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe to the channel. 
I'm going to take care of this ambush and extract, and I'll see you all in the next one. I'll do a full build or a full breakdown of this farming route. That way, you know all 13 routes very easy. Ooh. Yeah, the Kingbreaker still does damage, even with 2.1 million armor. I mean, this, this build is unstoppable in the Dark Zone. You'd have to have multiple people shooting you at once. Um, and that's players. You'd have to have multiple players shooting you at once for them to do any, like, real damage to you. But all right, everyone. Hit that like, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. This is my DZ farming build. And I just showed you one of my farming routes to hit all of the boxes in Dark Zone West. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found this video helpful or informative in any way, shape, or form, make sure you hit that you thumbs up. Support the channel by subscribing. And if you want to be a part of one of those giveaways, just hit the join button and become a member. But all right, everyone. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.